hey, James, would you be able to uh, fix a typo on the site, add a button, and then uh, add a new section to the homepage for me today? Uh, yeah, I've kind of got a lot going on, but I guess I can do that for you. I just feel like we need a better process in the future. Maybe you could do some of those changes yourself and deploy them without us ever having to touch the code. Wouldn't that be amazing? What's up, everyone? My name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly videos about web development related topics. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a better way to create and manage your marketing sites, your landing pages, and at the same time, empower not only your development teams, but your marketing teams as well. So as you can probably tell, this video is sponsored by Butter CMS. Can you tell by the shirt? Now, I'm a big fan of headless CMS options. So in this video, we're gonna use Butter CMS combine it with Next.js to build a flexible website and then host that on Vercel. So for your reference, Butter CMS is an amazing option for both developers and marketers. After the developer team set up the actual code base and deploy that, marketing teams can go in and make changes to the layout, the text, the buttons, the navigation, add extra pages, anything they want, they can go and customize inside the dashboard, which means no having to wait on development teams to ship new features or new updates to the website. Now, I know what you're thinking, James, that's a really awesome shirt. How do I get one? Well, the really cool thing about this video and working with Butter is Butter is giving away 50 free versions of their swag pack, which includes this t-shirt. So to be eligible, what you'll need to do is follow along with the video today, actually go through the process on your own Butter CMS account and deploy the starter application, the starter Next.js application to Vercel. So once that thing is deployed, you can send a tweet to be eligible. Make sure to tag myself, James Q. Quick, as well as Butter CMS, and use the hashtag buildwithbutter and include a link to your deployed website and you'll be eligible to win one of 50 free swag packs. And as an extra bonus, if you create your account, you can then email support at Butter CMS and tell them that I sent you James Q. Quick and you'll get 50% off for three months. So make sure you follow along with the video. There'll be instructions in the description below in case you missed any of that but let's go ahead and actually see this in action. All right, so I'm at buttercms.com. You'll have a link to this in the description below. And I'm gonna go ahead and log in and kind of start from scratch here. So with my account, I'm going to uh, use an account that I haven't used yet. So this is gonna be a brand new account for me. So I'm gonna use my, I'll use my James at Compressed FM email. This is actually for my podcast, Compressed FM, which you should check out with my podcast co-host, Amy Dutton. Uh, but they have this little onboarding experience in Butter to get to know you a little bit well, which I think is kind of cool. So what best describes my role? I'm a developer. How much experience do I have with a headless CMS? Uh, personal projects. What are you thinking about? Uh, nothing planned, just kind of trying it out. Maybe you're going along with the demo to get hopefully a piece of swag. Uh, do you already use a headless CMS? And uh, yeah, I use other headless CMS options. So show me the dashboard. So the cool thing about this is they have all these different starters to get you started and make it as easy as possible for you to onboard with Butter. Uh, so kind of every framework that you could imagine is here, including Next.js, which is what we're going to work with today. So the first step that they have here is to run the project locally. What's kind of cool about this is once you add your API token to the project that you run locally and then run it, it's going to detect that you made an API call to Butter and confirm that you've done that setup appropriately and then progress you on to the next step. But I'm going to jump the gun a little bit. I'm going to take this all the way to deploy from version from start from the start from from square one, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip this step and click next and then go to, to the deploy here. I'm gonna copy my API token. Now this is not a private credential since it's read only. This isn't used to actually change any data. So, so it's not completely private, but we'll put this in an environment variable in Vercel for our website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this deploy button. This is going to send us over to Vercel, an amazing hosting option for lots of different types of sites, including the one we're doing here. And then in this case, I'm gonna rename this repository to Next.js Starter Butter CMS 20 because uh, testing and demos and et cetera. So we'll call create. What that's gonna do is fork their starter repository into my account and then name it in this case, Butter CMS Starter 20 or Next.js Starter Butter CMS 20. And then make sure that you paste in your API key into this environment variable. Now it's kind of cool that this is already kind of templated out for you to show you what your environment variable is based on this deploy functionality. So we can go ahead and deploy. That's going to take a few seconds. And when we come back, we'll have a live website on Vercel that's pulling data from Butter CMS. I'll see you in a second. All right, so that deployment process has finished. It's brought us back to Butter here and it's already connected or it's already got, um, got a reference to the actual deployed URL of our app. So I'm going to open this in a new tab just to show you that this thing is fully deployed. 
So here is that starter application hosted on a real domain. You could go and check this out if you wanted to. Sevi, quiet. And this is all you have to do to be eligible for the swag. So you could take this URL and tweet that and be eligible for swag. So go and do it. But you can take this to the next level by being able to customize the code and be able to add some creative and cool features, a little teaser here of what we'll do here in a second. But before we do that, I want to show you how Butter CMS is connected to Vercel behind the scenes. So I'm going to go to uh, my Vercel.com dashboard. I'm going to open up. You can see I've got several of these, uh, but my Next.js Butter CMS 20. And I want to show you that when we make changes in our data, this will actually already trigger, already automatically trigger a build of our site in Next.js. So as we look around uh, the Butter dashboard here, you can see we've got a pages tab and inside of these pages, we've got a landing page with components. Now this is a definition of a type of page that has these different properties and a little helper menu here. So you can have a hero, two column image, features, two column with image, testimonial, et cetera, et cetera, as well as SEO information up here. So let's actually look into these details and change a little bit about this. So let's look into our hero section here. Let's expand this and then we can say, uh, James's super cool website. All right, so now what's gonna happen when we publish this, this is actually gonna trigger a redeploy inside of Vercel. So if we look inside of deployments inside of Vercel, I haven't done anything, but this will now trigger a new build of our site. So you can see here that it's building, it'll take a couple seconds and then we'll be able to see those changes live. So after you've deployed your site to Vercel, you can go right into the Butter CMS dashboard. You can customize your body text. You can uh, reorganize these images or these sections to put them in a different order if you want to. And all of that stuff will kick off an automatic build and then you'll be able to see those changes live on your site. So I'll come back in a second and show you that. Okay, that only took a few extra seconds and it is ready to go. So now if I refresh, you should see that this title has changed and now this is James's super cool site. Now I'm not gonna get into building logos and color schemes and that sort of stuff, but you have full customization over all of these things that you see on the site. Now, if you wanna add some extra functionality in code, that's where the source code comes in, which is just a Next.js project. So you can use all of your React and Next.js experience to build whatever you want. So now let's go ahead and find that code, check it out, bring it locally, and we'll be able to run this stuff locally, test changes, and then push that stuff back up to Vercel. All right, so I'm gonna open up the uh, github.com, and then I'm going to search in my repositories for uh, just the number 20, probably. I've got a few different things in here that have the number 20 in them. So maybe that's not the best. Let's look for Butter CMS. And here is my Next.js Butter CMS 20. Again, done a few of these. And then I'm going to uh, copy this URL and we'll go ahead and clone that locally so we can work with the code. All right, so I've got open VS Code, my favorite editor for web development. And I'm gonna go ahead and clone, uh, do a git clone command against that URL that I just copied. So we'll paste that in. This will clone the repository. Now I can open this project inside of VS Code. And uh, this is gonna be Butter CMS and 20. So code-r is a nice little flag that you can use to open that project inside of the window that you're already in. So once we have that code, we'll need to install the packages. So we can do an npm install. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and run this project. All right, so that has finished. Now the other thing we need to do is update our env variable so that it knows what our api key is so that's the thing that we would have gotten in our dashboard in one of those previous steps so if we go back to the home page here and go back to the run locally uh, or the deploy i believe as well you can copy your api token if you didn't already have it now here's one cool thing that i have in my computer is a multiple clipboard history app called flycut i believe so I just copied this thing just now, but if I go back through my history of things I've copied, you can see I copied it a while back too when I pasted it inside of Vercel. Get yourself a multiple copy clipboard app thingy. It's super useful. Uh, so we'll paste that in. So that should be all we need to now be able to run this thing locally. So this should start up a Next.js project. It's gonna run at localhost 3000, and we should open this up. We'll see the same exact thing that we just saw running locally on our machine. It's connected to Butter CMS. It's pulling in all this data, but now we can even do cooler stuff where we can test locally. So if we go back into the dashboard and go back to our pages, for example, and we make more changes. So let's look at this landing page with components. That's basically our homepage. Let's open our hero and let's say, um, James is the best web developer in the world. Completely false, by the way. Uh, if we just now save a draft, what's gonna happen is back in, let's close out 
well, we can leave that open. Let's come back to our local version of this. Let's up or let's refresh this page. Butter CMS is now telling us, hey, there's changes been made to this data. So our local website now is able to see those changes. Now this comes from a configuration in the source code that is listening for preview changes, not just published changes. So I'll show you where that is. So let's go back to our source code. I'm gonna open up the api.js inside of the lib folder. And inside of here, I'm gonna move this down a little bit so we can see more. There's a preview setting flag. So it's looking for a preview variable inside of the .env file or in your environment variables in Vercel. And then it's determining if that thing equals true or if the preview setting is undefined, then it's gonna go ahead and set that for you. So this is saying that preview mode will be made available to you by default. So this is why running locally, we were able to save a draft of our data and have that show up on our website. This is a great way to be able to test out some stuff and have other people see the changes that you've made. Now I've got a couple of wonky ideas. I wanna show you how you can use Butter CMS to do configurations for your website. And one of the things that I had in mind was what if we took our hero and we decided for some reason, marketing team might wanna turn this thing upside down. I don't know why they would, but they might want to. So uh, what this would look like in our CSS is we would have a transform and then we would call trans or not translate, but rotate. And then we could rotate this 45 degrees or 180 degrees, which will just flip that upside down. Why would we wanna do that? Because we absolutely can to show you the power of Butter CMS with Next.js. So uh, there's two things we'll have to do here. We'll need to update the components inside of Butter CMS to accept that property or have that checkbox. And then we'll need to update some code to apply that new style based on what we just saw. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, back in the Butter CMS dashboard. Uh, if we uh, look inside of our hero, we have a couple of different properties. We have headline, subheadline, image, button label, button URL, scroll anchor. What we want is now another checkbox inside of here that we can determine whether or not we want to flip this upside down. So let's go into our page types inside of our landing page. You see here are all of those uh, different uh, sections that we uh, have seen inside of our page. Now you can also see that this is used by uh, one page uses this page type. So inside of our hero, let's go and open this and go to edit. And now we'll just add a checkbox here. So they've got a checkbox setting that we can just click to add. And we'll call this uh, flip vertical. Uh, we'll say it's not required. And uh, we'll say the help text is, do you want to flip this thing upside down? Why would we do it? Because we can, because it's gonna be fun. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click done here. And now we can go back into our uh, landing page. Oh, let's make sure to save this first. And now we can go back into our pages, look at our landing page with components. All right, so it's gonna be our main page. Go back into the hero section. Now that hero section is configured with this extra property of flip vertical, uh, it gives us a little text here, the helper text. And we can say, yes, let's flip vertical. And let's go ahead and save this as a draft. Cool. So. Now we need to go into the code and look for this new property and add some CSS based on that new property. Now to show you what this data looks like, one thing we can do is come up into this three dots menu and look at the API Explorer. This is gonna show us the data that's gonna come back when we actually query this page. So you can see in here for this page, it's got a field section. Inside of there is where we have the body. Inside of the body is where we have all these different sections. And then inside of the fields of the hero component so that we have these sections inside of the body. Inside of hero, we have this flip vertical true. Now we need to look for that property inside of our code and go and apply this new style based on that. So let's go do it. All right, so let's uh, pull this API Explorer down a little bit. We'll come back to our code and I'm gonna look for a landing page uh, dynamic route here, which is slug. So what this does is it creates a landing page component or uses this landing page component for each one of our landing pages that we have. And then what we have is for each one of the body fields, so the inside of the body, there's the different components. Each one of those, we're going to generate a landing page section. Then we translate from the Butter CMS component to an actual component in React. So you see that we have the hero here, the two column with image, features, et cetera, et cetera. So we can open up the hero component, which is in page sections and hero. So just kind of showing you how this relationship works. Now, one of the things that I wanna check is if this property of flip vertical is present. So let's save this. We can also log this flip vertical. 
So just so we make sure we, we are getting this inside of our code, let's go back to the locally running site. Let's refresh because that was made with my CSS change. So it should be back to normal. And let's look inside of our console. And then inside of here, you see we have a property of undefined. So maybe we uh, didn't quite type that in correctly. Let's see if we are passing in, we should be passing in all of the section data. All right, so we're passing in all of the section data. And now we just need to make sure that we're getting that right property. Ah, and checking back in the API Explorer, this is kind of handy to have this. I, it's not actually capitalized with the vertical. So it looks like it's all lowercase. So let's come back to our locally running site and then we will lowercase this to make sure we get the spelling correct and then go and update it here as well. So now we should see that we're getting this property of true. It's gonna refresh here. So there's our property of true that we care about. So now that we know that is the case, we can apply some styles to the section based on if that property is true. So maybe what we can do is conditionally add a class name. So let's go in and make this an ES6 template literal string. So it'll have the class of hero section, and then we'll have a conditional class of flip. So what we'll do is we'll use our flip vertical, uh, flip vertical uh, variable that we just got above, and this should actually be inside of brackets as well. So that flip variable, if that flip variable is true, then we'll add a class of flipped, Otherwise, uh, we'll add nothing. So this is a, a ternary operator where we're checking the condition or the, the truthiness of flip vertical. If it is truthy, we'll use apply the class of flipped. And then if not, we'll see nothing. So if we save this and refresh, we don't have the styling yet for this. Uh, but if we refresh our page, I think this should be okay. Nope, flip vertical is not defined. That's because we forgot this is lowercase. All right, now we should refresh. Uh, but when we see this component, we hopefully will see that it has an extra class of flip. So if we go back up to hero, you see it has the class of flip. Now we just need to add that in our CSS. So let's open up the CSS. Uh, there's a lot of starter CSS in here. You can customize this obviously as much as you want to. I'm gonna start at the top just for simplicity, but I'm gonna add a flipped and we'll call this, uh, we'll do the transform and then tra not rotate or not translate, but rotate and we'll rotate this 180 degrees. So. Uh, now, if we come back to this component and refresh for whatever reason we want to, this thing is flipped. But the cool thing now to show you how this works is now if we come back in and uncheck that flip box or the flip vertical, let's uncheck that. And then let's go ahead and save that as a draft. The local version of our site is now going to know that that thing has changed. And when we refresh, this thing is back to normal. So a couple of cool things that you could do. You may or may not want to actually flip something. You could add a snow effect to your site, which is something we might do right now. And then you could uh, add a call out that's configurable to say, hey, if we have a sale coming up, we'll put this call out bar at the top. Whatever you want to do, you can customize between your settings in Butter CMS and the code in Next.js. So let's see how to add a snow effect to the site. So maybe it's seasonal and you just want to add some snow. Let's actually go into our definition for this page type. So let's go back to our content types page type. Let's go to the landing page and inside of here, uh, inside of not the body directly, but just the actual page itself, because this won't be tied to the body, but the whole page, we will add a property. Uh, let's add a checkbox of is snowing. And I just realized why we had the capitalization earlier. This is actually kind of a user friendly name that you should be typing in here. Butter CMS is then going to translate that to snake case. So that's why I was lower casing it for us. Uh, should we add snow effect on the site? All right, and this will be a checkbox, so just yes or no for is snowing. So we'll go ahead and save that. All right, so let's go back to our actual page. So let's go back to landing page, landing page with components, go into not the body, but below we have the setting for is snowing. Let's go ahead and save that as a draft. Now, instead of going into the specific component, we're gonna look inside of the landing page property here. So if we look inside of a uh, landing page and then we log out this page, we should see this property now is coming along with this page. All right, so let's go and look inside of this page. You see this is being logged out. Inside of here, we've got our fields property and down here somewhere, we have our is snowing property set to true. So now we can detect that and add a snow effect to our site. So on NPM, there's a uh, snow effect react. I forget exactly what it's called. There's react snowfall. And I've kind of played around with these, but it makes it really easy to add uh, snow to your site. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this install command. We will uh, close our uh, running site for a second, install this package. And then I think all we need to do is add in this snowfall component here. 
and we can add our snowfall. So let's do, uh, let's check. This should be page uh, dot fields, and let's just make sure we have this path completely right. So page dot fields dot is underscore snowing. So we can grab this like this. So that's what that property will look like. And then uh, inside of our page, we can say uh, if uh, page, and we can use the question mark syntax here to make sure we don't have any errors if any of these pieces are undefined. So page.fields.is snowing. Uh, if that is the case, so and and, then we'll also add in the react snowfall. React snowfall, did I get that right? Uh, just snowfall. So let's go back and this will be snowfall, snowfall property or snowfall component. This should just give us snow since this thing is turned on. So let's go back to our page and let's refresh and it takes a second for this to start up. And actually, no, it doesn't. We're not running the site because we stopped it to do our uh, NPM install. So let's get the site running and let's go back and refresh the page. And you should see, hopefully this can come through that we've got this snow effect coming through on our site. Now you could do this seasonal for, you could change this for flowers or anything else that you wanted to change, but here's the snow effect controlled by butter. So one more time, if we go back into the dashboard and turn this thing off. So inside of the body and we want to check off is snowing and we save that draft and then refresh our page locally. Now that snow is completely gone. So you can customize anything as wildly as you want to. Now, the last thing I want to show you is that this is still connected to our deployed website in Vercel. So let's do two things. Let's do our is snowing property and let's go into the hero and do our flip vertical property. Make sure that's checked. We'll go ahead and publish this. Now behind the scenes, what this is gonna do is kick off a build inside of Vercel so we could see these changes. But the one thing we're missing is since there's been code changes, we need to actually update the code that Vercel has by pushing to the GitHub repository. So if we do a git status, you see we've uh, changed a couple of different things. So let's go into our git commit and, or actually let's do a git uh, add star. We'll git commit added some amazing new features. Oh, I haven't, I, I use a shortcut for git commits. Uh, so I don't ever write them by default very often. So I forgot the dash M there. And then uh, I have shortcuts for GGP to push this to uh, production. So what's going to happen is uh, that is going to kick off another build. So it's actually two builds, but we needed to do one more because of the code change. After this, it's just changes in butter. So we'll come back to uh, butter CMS. You see, we've got a build kicked off here. And once this is finished, we should see these changes in our live site. Okay, so it looks like this has finished. Let's come in and refresh the page and it should be upside down with snow effects. I don't think I've ever had more fun messing with the settings of a website. So one last thing, just to show you that there's no more code changes and your marketing teams can come in and make these changes. Let's get rid of flip vertical. Let's leave the snow just because I think that's fun. We'll publish this that will kick off yet another build. So make sure or make sure you understand that this thing is connected. So it's kicking off another build. We'll come back here in a few seconds and see that that flip is gone, but the snow is still there. And all this stuff is really, really cool and connected between Butter CMS, the code in Next.js and deployed on Vercel. Okay, it's ready. Refresh one more time. Flip goes the other way. Snow still falls slowly. Awesome. So that is how you can use Butter CMS as your headless CMS to build really cool and flexible landing pages and marketing sites where your development teams can add the features that they want, the functionality that they want, and after that, be hands off for anyone else to come in that you approve, not just anyone, but people that you approve and add to the site to make changes, configurations, add snow effects, flip things upside down, whatever it is that you want them to be able to do, which can be a lot of fun. You see that it's integrated directly with Vercel to push updates, to trigger a build in Vercel. So you always have the latest stuff displayed on your site. It's really, really cool. So don't forget, uh, there's instructions in the details below in the description below of how you can enter to win one of 50 swag packs from Butter. Don't want to miss out on that. Go through this setup, deploy a Next.js project, the starter project to Vercel, tweet about it, include my handle, Butter CMLs, the hashtag build with Butter and a link to your site, and you'll be eligible for the giveaway. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any additional questions of things you want to see covered in the future, let me know in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.